The Bengals handled business on Sunday at Paycor Stadium, knocking out the Colts 34-14 to improve to 7-6 on the season. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine alongside Elise Jesse. Welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk, where the Bengals are in the thick of the playoff race. Depending on what happens in that Chargers game, if the Chargers beat the Broncos, they will be the seven seed. So, shocker for a lot of people. Uh, I think a lot of people watching didn't necessarily expect Jake Browning to go 2-1 and one in his first three starts. I didn't expect it. I don't think you did. And yet here we are. The Bengals are 7-6 and six, trying to make another December playoff run. I think it speaks so much about who they are as a group. Like they're gritty, they're scrappy, they're fighting because they still have playoff hopes. They still want to play in the postseason. And when Joe Burrow went down with the injury and then had to get season ending surgery, um, a lot of people were counting the Bengals out, like saying there's no way the Bengals can do anything else this season. And look at what this group is now doing. They're now, they beat the Colts handily today, 34 to 14. And now they're in a position where they kind of control their own destiny to a, to a certain extent. Yeah, you're right. And I think the magic number playoff wise is probably 10. We'll see after the dust settles uh, this week to to look at it and, and the playoff picture as a whole. But let's start with Jake Browning, 18 of 24, 275, two touchdowns. Man, I mean, completing 70 plus percent of his passes, he ran for another touchdown. Jake Browning has been really, really good. He had the pick six today, which I do think was on him. He said it probably was. But even with that, he's played much better than I anticipated in this offense back-to-back weeks with 30-plus points. I was impressed with the fact that he was able to keep his composure and remain calm for a second straight game because after his last game against the Jaguars, everyone was talking about, can he do it consistently? Can he do this multiple games in a row? And I think he was even wondering that at one point based on what he was saying to reporters, but he was able to pull that off. He was able to be calm, execute properly. I know the guys around him are happy that he's executing at the level that he is. That's what they're expecting from him. Um, And I was honestly really impressed. I know this is not about Jake Browning, but just the team as a whole, when the Colts, in a matter of, what, 25 seconds, managed to tie up the game down 14 points, 14-14, to score with a minute 30 to go. I mean, they were trying to take the the sail out of, or the wind out of the sails for the Bengals, and the Bengals didn't let them do it. Shut them out in the second half. That's... It's interesting because the past two weeks now, you had the Tyler Boyd interception that completely flipped the Monday night game, right. but they didn't. It could have. It could have, yeah. It, it felt like it was going to be it, yeah. and it didn't. And it, it was the same thing today. You get out to a 14 nothing lead, Chase Brown, we'll get to the running game, but Chase Brown, Joe Mixon just carrying you on your first three possessions. They had 127 yards from scrimmage combined on the Bengals' first three possessions, two of which obviously ended in touchdowns. So you're up 14 to nothing, and then you have a Trey Hendrickson, just awful penalty by him, and he'll admit it. The Colts eat up a ton of clock. They score, and they miss the extra point. It's like, oh, well, go score, and you still feel good. You might be up 17-6 going into the half. In the pick six, it's 14-14 to at halftime, but they responded. And they respond by going downfield, scoring a touchdown. They never trailed in this game. And outside of that 25-second blip at the end where the last two minutes of the second quarter felt like an hour, it really did, outside of that, this this team dominated a really good Colts team. And the other element of this before we get to the defense is the run game. Mm-hmm. And you deserve credit because you've been on the run game a ton. Elise always talks about the run game. It's, she's run. she's Mrs. Run Game. <laughs> and to your credit and to the Bengals' credit, they've gotten the run game going over the past couple of weeks. It's made Jake Browning's life easier. It's allowed them to limit possessions for the Colts. The Colts only had – three possessions after tying the game at 14 and three possessions later, they're down 31 to 14. Obviously the final score is close to that at 34, 14, but Joe Mixon, Chase Brown, thunder, lightning, whatever analogy you want to use, it works. They're, the duo is so much fun to watch. I asked Joe Mixon right after the game, what do you think about Chase Brown? And he's like, clearly Chase is taking notes on me. Like he's taking notes for me. And then I asked uh, Chase, I'm like, are you taking notes on Joe Mixon? He's like, yeah, of course I am. He's a pro bowler. So, I mean, they're they're playing complimentary football together. Um, obviously, Joe is helping Chase along. And I've got to give credit to that. You gave me credit for too much credit, honestly. The coaching staff calling the run plays that they are and calling the screens for Chase and it working out. I mean, I honestly, I am impressed with how much this has turned around. And it always almost makes me wonder what this could have been if Joe Burrow was healthy watching this duo right now. Yeah, I, I do wonder because we haven't seen Joe Burrow with 
a run game like this or an explosive back like Chase. And I think that's the element. It's not number of carries, and I've said that a ton. If you watch CBT regularly, I say volume-wise, I kind of downplay that. It's efficiency. Can you be efficient and explosive? And they've been both the past couple of weeks. Joe Mixon, screen game, 40-plus yard reception in each of the past two games. Obviously, Chase Brown got things started. 54 yards, and he topped the 22 mile per hour mark 22.05 miles per hour second to only dk metcalf according to nfl next gen stats as fast as ball carriers in the league this year faster than tyree kill for those wondering the man can fly and thank goodness they got him the ball at the right time because he's certainly lit a fire under this offense and i think he's helping mixon too even if if joe might not see it you just keep him fresher and mixon's fresher and he can be be more explosive and more effective Yeah, more productive. I mean, that's exactly what you want from your run game. And Chase Brown being in the top 1% of speed in the NFL is crazy that he's in Cincinnati and on this roster. It makes me wonder what was going through his mind when he was fully healthy three games ago and he didn't get a touch. And now he's like, okay, now you guys trust me. Now you guys are finally seeing what I bring to the table. Give me all you got. That's what that's the vibe that I'm getting from him. Yes, he's super humble, down to earth, and he's not going to talk himself up. But I think he's finally like, now you guys are seeing what my peewee coaches have seen my entire life. He had 328 carries at Illinois last year. He is not afraid of carrying the rock. He is not. Not at all. Uh, Real quick before we get to the defense, Jake Browning, drink water, hydrate. I already made one joke uh, to him at the end of the news conference. Like, go chug some water after he talked for like 12 minutes or so. His teammates are going to do the same. I've never seen that. Hand cramp. Had to leave the game. A.J. McCarron played for a second. It should have been a touchdown to T. That's annoying. But, uh, yeah, one of the weird injuries. In, in the, this, is what, this is what proves that Jake Browning has exceeded expectations. My phone blew up when he left the game with an injury. It was, I had multiple friends text me like, oh, no, what's going on with Jake? And, and I didn't think it was anything serious, and obviously it was just a hand cramp. But, yeah, one of the weirder injuries I've seen. Yeah, definitely one of the weirdest ones I've seen, especially when for him to run back on the field and they were like, oh, it's just cramping. I'm like, Wait, what? Cramping in your thumb? I've never heard of that. And all the years that we've worked in sports, for neither one of us to ever hear something like that, it's hilarious. Um, also, by the way, that touchdown to T, both A.J. McCarron and T. Higgins, I talked to them after the game, they both thought that that was a call that was a little soft. And that neither one of them thought that T pushed off like that. I agree. And I know T had some drops today and he's taking some heat. Uh, I tweeted, he can't get a break right now. Because that I thought it was a touchdown. It was a great ball by A.J. McCarron coming in cold, by the way. So hopefully T gets a a touchdown next week. The the Bengals, they've had two wins in six days, and they play again six days from now, Saturday right here against the Minnesota Vikings. But the thing that I didn't see coming is this defense pitching a shutout, and they basically did. I mean, they're they're a Trey Hendrickson play where he doesn't hit Gardner Minshew way late and it was just a dumb hit because I don't know what he was thinking but if he doesn't do that and he did play well today I'm not trying to be too critical of Trey but on that play it was a boneheaded play they're that away from pitching a a complete shutout today they were great against the Colts limited them all game long and uh, pitched a shutout in the second half even with the pick six all the momentum they didn't give up another point I mean you could tell that Trey Hendrickson was beating himself up after that because it was third and long they had the chance to have the ball at a really great positioning on the field. And Trey on the sidelines comes off, and he's just beside himself. DJ Reader has both of his hands on his shoulder pads, and he's, like, trying to talk Trey off a ledge. Like, calm down. It's okay. Next play, get it out of your head. Like, trying to get him to get back to normal, which he did. Um, And I was impressed by the shutout, too. I was asking Chidabe Awuzie about the shutout. Um, the second half, and he was just kind of like, this is who we are. And then he mentioned that Lou Anarumo has been on them, like white on rice. Like he is not letting up. He is coaching them super hard, and he's letting them know that, you know, when they were giving up multiple touchdowns and not playing within themselves, not executing or trusting the guy next to them to make the plays, they were putting bad tape out there. No player wants to do that in the position that they're in. No player does, and this Bengals defense, they've responded. They showed me something today. I wasn't sure if they would be able to do what they did today again because this was this turnover-based defense, and they did force a turnover. Trey Hendrickson deserves credit there. B.J. Hill with the interception. He also had the fumble on special teams that they were able to recover. D.J. Ivey getting some interesting snaps on defense and some valuable snaps. So 
look, this this team, they're building, they're trending in the right direction. We'll see if it continues. I would talk with Elise for another 20 minutes, but she would freeze to death. So instead of doing that, uh, we're going to sign off here with the Bengals handle business 34 to 14. For Elise Jesse, I'm James Rapine. Shout out to Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, editor, and whatever else you want to call him. Until next time, thank you so much for watching Cincinnati Bengals Talk.